Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're going to talk about the encryption. Uh, I know previously we have talked a lot about the encryption and different methodologies and then encryption keys and the cryptographic keys and how to manage uh, the key management and everything. So, But today's topic is a bit different and a and, and bit misunderstood by the community. I've been talking to several developers and, and, and most of them do not realize how important uh, is the client-side encryption. They are, they are still happy with sometimes like you know no encryption or maybe the server side encryption, but uh, there are circumstances where you have to uh, put an additional layer of security by doing the client side encryption. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, dig dive, deep dive into uh, each of the encryption methodology and see why client side encryption is a is a better suited uh, for certain uh, applications. So first thing, uh, we need to understand, like, you know, what are the types of encryption requests? Uh, so, of course, there are, like, you know, um, two, uh, two methods, as we saw uh, in the first slide. So the server-side encryption and the client-side encryption. Uh, in transit, we always use TLS for encrypting the data in transit, so to avoid the MITM and the eavesdropping sort of attacks. But the client uh, data at rest has to be encrypted. So that's why we use like you know server-side encryption. Uh, the goal of the encryption is to stop a security breach from becoming a data breach. So uh, suppose you have a misconfiguration and and someone uh, is able to get hold to your database where you have all the critical data stored. Now that's a security breach. But when somebody can access that data and decrypt the data and use that, maybe just to sell into the dark web or maybe uh, like you know to use uh, to gain some more understanding about the users whatever the goal is but when the attacker is able to uh, get the plain text data that's a data breach so uh, encryption is designed to be an extra level of protection when there are privileged access level breaches or accidental uh, misconfiguration when designing for security it is important to know who your adversary is, right? So because uh, when you're designing this uh, encryption system or when you're designing the application, you have to make sure from whom you're protecting your data from. So that could be like, you know, maybe an insider. That could be uh, maybe if you're hosting at the cloud and you want to protect from the cloud provider. Or, and of course, you want to protect from the hackers or the bad guys or the cyber criminals. So, uh, uh, Depending on the which parties that, uh, and of course this this is something that you will be able to uh, get uh, when you do the threat modeling. We have seen uh, in the previous videos like how to do the threat modeling and etc. But yeah, when when you do this, uh, you will be able to figure out who your uh, who, which parties you want to protect against. So the first thing, uh, let's let's talk about the server side encryption. This is this is very straightforward, and and as the name suggests. The encryption uh, happens on the server side, but there are two flavors of it. Uh, so one, uh, where the key is with the server, and the key is with the client. Now, none of them uh, provides the best level of security, and here is the why. So, in this example, let's say uh, you are the software developer and then the application developer, and you develop the application you have host in the cloud. So uh, you give unencrypted data to the cloud, of course, and then the later, uh, the cloud provider will encrypt the data with the keys that they have developed. So for example, uh, let's say you're using AWS, so you have data at rest uh, in the RDS, and then you are using KMS to manage the key. Now, the key uh, resides in the cloud provider environment. So they have the uh, key. Of course, it's a KMS is a secure solution, but the key is with the KMS, and the data is also with the cloud provider. Now, imagine a scenario where uh, uh, there is a misconfiguration. So, for example, since it's part of a shared responsibility model, uh, the customer has to make sure that uh, AWS is securely configured. So imagine if the KMS uh, access rights hasn't been configured securely, and and uh, or maybe the RDS is not configured securely, and uh, for some reason an insider who has access to this AWS account uh, uh, got some wrong permission set up and then able to access RDS as well as the KMS. Now they are able to decrypt all the production data. 
and and same goes for the cyber criminals or the hackers as well if they are able to get into some permission or there's a glitch somewhere and able to get to the uh, cloud provider then they are able to decrypt the data with the keys in the kms so uh, uh so this is this is an insecure scenario of course uh, you do not want to uh like you know um, make this more prominent if the data stored is mostly like a public data or maybe not sensitive data but this is server side encryption with the server held keys is sometime uh, favored by the developers because it means there are no changes required throughout the development process what they just need to do is put the data into the cloud provider and then the cloud provider will make sure about the encryption uh, and decryption. But the reality is uh, that the server side encryption doesn't actually protect against third parties and access level misconfiguration as we just talked about. So uh, what do we do if, uh, let's say, with the client held keys? So this is a bit secure scenario where instead of server, uh, the key is going to be uh, held by the client. So every time the server wants to decrypt something they'll come back to the client get the key decrypt it and then and pass it on uh, again this is a much i don't think so this is a very popular scenario uh, because you then require the integration between the client and the server for the key exchange and that becomes uh, another uh, another threat so that's why it is not recommended and and now so in order of the encryption to be most effective, right? The encryption key must be kept secret from the server. As we just saw, like if the client would have the key, it would be much secret. And which is only possible using the client and encryption. User hold their own key, but the server will encrypt and decrypt on their behalf, right? So uh, this is what the client side encryption is. Uh, now, client side encryption is the sufficient for the powerful devices so for example the application or the or the IoT devices which has enough memory and the power to perform encryption and decryption because of course this generates latency so sometimes like you know developers are hesitant on uh, doing the client side encryption but there are some good reasons uh, you want to go for the client side encryption and especially if you are a, if you are a penetration tester or if you are a security consultant this is something that you should highly uh, recommend or, or or discuss with your uh, customers to ensure that they have also uh, enabled the client side encryption where, where, wherever it's required uh, of course as we talked about here the users encrypt their own data with their own key so suppose you want to put some data into the RDS. Uh, so what uh, first application would do is it will encrypt the data with their own key and then put the encrypted data into the RDS. And of course, then you can also have the server-side encryption check on to have additional layer of security. So now, if in case attacker got access to the key and the data, they would only be able to decrypt uh, what the server side has encrypted, but not the client side. So they would still not get access to the plain text data. Uh, of course, there's a top-level security assurance. Uh, this is above and so you are going above and beyond of the encryption. So this is uh, this is the highest level of security that you could ever get, and that's why it's a, it's a very much uh, recommended. Then there is also a compliance requirement. So, so there are certain compliance, for example, the GDPR, uh, who mandates that every data that's stored uh, has to have a client side encryption uh, enabled. So Again, this is uh, very much recommended by some newer compliance, and I'm sure uh, more and more compliance. Uh, even if you if you take a look at the OWASP, ASVS, or the uh, guidelines in the uh, for the critical application, they also recommend for the client side encryption. And uh, where you should do uh, enable the client side encryption. So, for example, if you are storing data such as SSN, credit card information, bank account. Uh, like some PII, etc. Then, uh, of course, that's something. Uh, these are the uh, eligible application uh, who would be the candidate for enabling the client side encryption. So this is uh, pretty much uh, all I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to highlight some benefits about doing the client side encryption. So uh, let me know uh, what you uh, what your thoughts are, and if you have encountered any such scenario where uh, you were in dilemma whether go with the client side or the server side encryption i would love to hear some stories as well uh i guess that's it for now i'll see you guys next week